Hello, all. A very good afternoon. Uh, so I'm Tindashni from the Zoho Books. So we have reached the last session of this GST webinar series. So in today's session, we will be discussing about the annual return filing, which is available in Zoho Books. That is your GSTR nine. And to take us through the process of this filing in a detailed way, uh, Ilamati is here with us today. So over to you, Ilamati. Hello, everyone. Thanking you all for joining this session today. This is Ilamati. product expert in zoho books today i'm going to present you all about gstr 9 the annual return in zoho books so uh, before getting into zoho books let's understand the basics of gstr 9 and its related details so the first thing is what is gstr 9 who are all required to file this return and the prerequisites uh, then the due date and filing fee for uh, other gstr 9 and the steps for filing the gstr 9 in zoho books and the structure of gstr 9 in zoho books so what's the first question it's a uh, gstr 9 so uh, this is one of the gst return that has to be filed by the tax payers including ses units and the ses developers on a yearly basis so this return contains the details of all the supplies that were made and received during a financial year along with the turnover and the audit details so the next one is who are all required to file this return uh, form gstr 9 is to be filed by a person who is registered as a regular taxpayer including ses units or ses developers and the taxpayers who have withdrawn from the composition scheme to normal taxpayer any time during the financial year so this is mandatory for the taxpayers who are having the turnover above 2 crore per year depending on the type of taxpayer the annual gstr might differ for the normal taxpayer it is gstr 9 for the composition taxpayer they need to file gstr 9a and for the e-commerce operator it is gstr 9b here uh, we uh, some of the normal taxpayers might have a doubt like whether they need to file the return or not let's have a clear understanding on this case by case so uh, let's consider that if a person is a regular taxpayer for a certain period of an year and then they are moving to composition scheme for the remaining period say the first 6 months uh, he is on a regular tax payer and the rest of the year is he is under the composition scheme in uh, in this particular case the tax payer has to file the gstr 9 for first 6 months and the rest of the period and for the rest of the period he will be filing gstr 9a okay so uh, let's move on to the second uh, case where a normal tax payers registration got cancelled at a particular point of time in a financial year so they need to know uh, uh, they'll be confused whether uh, they need to file the return or not because currently he is uh, his uh, registration got cancelled in that case also the tax payer has to file the gstr return because he would have uh, filed a, any one of the returns which is gstr 1 or 3b in the mentioned financial year in that case they need to file the uh, form gstr 9 for sure uh, some of the uh, tax payers might have multiple gst registrations in a same state for a single company in that case uh, they need to know whether they need to file it for a organization or for a gstin the gstin uh, uh, the gst 9 form is basically for uh, for each gstin they need to file uh, for each gstin separately and it is not for a single organization so then uh, what is the prerequisites for filing the gstr 9 so the first prerequisite is the tax payer must have an active gstin during the relevant financial year as normal or a regular tax payer even for a single day then the tax payer uh, should have filed all the applicable returns in the sense the form gstr 1 or iff and the form gstr 3b of the relevant financial year before filing the annual return if these returns are not filed then the tax payer cannot file the form gstr 9 so the next question is who are all required to file the nil return so the nil return is basically for the tax payers um, who has not made any outward supplies not received any goods or services and has uh, no other liability to report and claimed any credits 
and uh, claimed any refunds or uh, not received any uh, uh, order creating demand and if there is uh, no late fee to be paid then uh, that particular user need to file this nil return so basically uh, uh, telling it in a simple way the taxpayer who hasn't made any transaction or made any profit hasn't paid any uh, tax to the government uh, there is no need for uh, them to uh, claim any itc from the government in that case uh, that taxpayer need to file the nil return so the next thing is what is the due date and late fee for filing the gst online the due date for filing this return is the 31st of december of the respective financial year if we are failing to file this return then uh, we would be having a late fee right uh, that late fee is uh, 200 uh, rupees per day and uh, this is subject to maximum of 0.25 percent of the taxpayers total turnover so the next is the gstr 9 structure so the gstr 9 is basically divided into six parts as you can see we have uh, the part one under part one we can have the basic details and under part two the outward supplies uh, uh, will be displayed and uh, which should be having the uh, table four and five and the part three would be having the details of itc availed and reversed and the part four would be having the details of tax paid and that will be displayed in the table nine and part five will be having the particulars of the transaction for the previous financial year declared in the returns of april to september of the current financial year and finally the part six would be having the other information like uh, the hutchison summary and that will be displayed in the 17th and 18th table please note that the details uh, uh, populated uh, will be populated based on the data available in your gstr1 and gstr3b returns all fields ca uh, can be edited except the table table 6a uh, 8a and uh, table 9 as these uh, details will not be uh, uh, available uh, in a po in in a zoho box and that needs to be updated in the gst portal so let's uh, have a, a view of uh, what these uh, parts of gstr uh, 9 form will look alike so the first one is basic detail this so this is the second part and the third one so uh, the fourth part would be tax paid and the fifth part would be the uh, previous year transactions and the sixth part uh, would be having the other details uh, which includes the GSTN summary and uh, these uh, tables cannot be edited as I mentioned before. So uh, the next thing is the steps to file the GSTR 9 return in Zoho Books. So before uh, stepping into Zoho Books, uh, there is a prerequisite for this. So uh, that is you need to enable the API access for Zoho uh, in your GST portal as a, a GSP Suvida provider. That is this access need to be uh, active uh, to push the return from uh, Zoho Books to GST portal. So the first thing we need to uh, do uh, is uh, we need to click on generate and view return and then we need to fetch and uh, update the auto calculated summary then uh, we need to push the data to the gst uh, uh, gstr uh, 9 to uh, gst portal and then uh, file your return so the first one is generate and view return so uh, this is a navigation step for going into uh, zoho books to file this return so the first one is we need to go uh, get into zoho box click on the gst filing tab then annual returns then uh, generate return select the reporting period and then click on generate so we can now get into zoho box and understand how the gstr 9 fo 9 form is implemented in zoho box so this is the view return tab which displays the details of the transactions available in zoho box only if you edit any transaction that falls under uh, your returns filing period you can generate the return once again by clicking on the regenerate return option so as i have mentioned earlier we have six parts in this form and uh, so here is the first part which would be having the basic details uh, like your uh, basic details of the taxpayer and the financial year uh, your gstan and the trade name if you have any okay so uh, this is the first uh, part then the second part would comprises of the outward and the inward supplies declared during the financial year which is basically the sales and purchase transactions which are associated to the respective period under this part we are having the table 4 uh, with the values of the transactions made to the customers 
to the other businesses that is or register persons the exports made to other countries says units says transactions etc and their associated advances credit notes uh, debit notes and all for uh, which the tax has been paid already based on the gstr1 and the gstr 3b so the the taxable value will be displayed in this section and the respective cgst sgst and igst will be displayed in the 3 4 and uh, fifth column so next one is uh, uh, we uh, we can move on to the table 5 the table 5 we have the transaction values of uh, exports made says uh, supplies on which the reverse charge is applicable which is the, the tax will be bared by the uh, uh, recipient and the other supplies such as nil rated uh, exempted non gst uh, non gst supplies so this uh, this table basically have only the transactions uh, which uh, for which the tax is not paid this table the this table will only have the taxable value column as the tax is not supported for uh, this table transactions now under the third part we will be having uh, we will have the details of itc declared and uh, has the table 6 and 7 under this so the table 6a is uh, uh, filled like pre-filled with uh, based on the gstr 3b and it is not editable in portal itself hence we are not supporting it over here as well um, the subsequent section of this table will brief us about the purchase transactions uh, through which we have availed the uh, itc from the government so these sections are further segregated as uh, inputs capital goods and input services what is the inputs means the transactions which are associated with the goods type of items are called as inputs and the capital goods are the transaction associated um, uh, as in, uh, under the asset account like uh, if you have purchased any um, goods for our company purpose then that can be uh, coming under the capital goods then the final one is the input services the transaction which are associated with service type of item will be coming under this part so the summary uh, of the respective transaction will get listed under the appropriate section then let's move on to the part 4 uh, in here we will be having the tax paid uh, details so which is not supported in zoho books right now so the table uh, 9 which is uh, auto uh, auto filled based on the details provided by you in the gstr 3b form for the relevant financial year in the gst portal hence uh, these fields cannot be editable then the part 5 in the part 5 we can see the amendments that is if we have made any changes in the uh, filed transactions of the previous financial year then those details will be displayed for instance i have created an invoice during the financial year 1920 and have made an amendment for the same during 2021 within the time frame april to september then those details will be displayed over here along with the taxes so finally uh, we have the part six which uh, uh, we are having the transactions which are received from the composition scheme uh, taxpayers uh, in which only the taxable value will get displayed as we will not be paying any um, uh, taxes for this particular type and then in the table 17 and 18 we are having the hsn summary of uh, outward and inward supplies which is the sales and the purchase transaction respectively this table will give us a detailed view of the uh, transaction and their consolidated value based on the hsn of the item the tax values such as uh, CGST, SGST and IGST uh, will get consolidated and get displayed in the overview page itself. We can also click on these details and have a better view of what are all the items which are associated and uh, what is the quantity, the total taxable uh, amount, what is the tax rate for this particular item and uh, what is the total CGST, SGST and the tax rates for the same. So similarly, we are having it for inward supplies as well. So um, finally, we are having the late fee uh, payable and uh, paid. This uh, will be uh, done only in the GSTR 9 portal. In this form, for uh, some of the uh, tables, we might not have the data as uh, uh, as it's not available. Hence, those, uh, those are all need to be updated in the GST portal. So the next thing is 
so uh, this is the generate and view return page which we have completed right now then we can just move on to the fetch and update summary so here this is the fetch and update summary tab in this tab you will be able to fetch the auto calculated summary from the gst portal that is uh, called basically uh, that will be called as the system calculated summary in portal the summary is calculated based on the uh, filed gstr1 and 3b available during your return filing period in case you have already filed your gstr9 in the gst portal you will not be able to fetch this auto calculated summary if you click on the fetch auto calculated uh, uh, a summary option um, you can verify the transactions in gst portal and in zoho box so uh, here you can see so this is the uh, fetch and uh, update summary tab so here you can see the auto calculated summary so uh, this is the value that is this is the value that is available in the gst portal for uh, this particular return of my gstin but uh, uh, the auto calculated summary uh, from zoho books will be displayed over here please note that the system will take some time to fetch the data from the portal and in the meantime you can continue your other accounting works in zoho books once the data is uh, fetched, uh, you will be notified to take further uh, actions like you will be uh, getting a notification over here and post that you can just come into this tab and uh, verify the same. So after you fetch the summary, you will be able to update the details in this for this return. So you can cross check the details in the auto calculated summary and in Zoho book summary and update the return with the uh, accurate values. So you will be alerted with a uh, red exclamation mark here. Uh, you will be having a red exclamation icon near the box if there is any mismatch between both the values you can also click on the uh, edit auto calculated summary and update the values over here if you just click on i mean um, uh, hover your uh, cursor, in, cursor in this field you can just see what is the auto calculated value and the zoho books uh, uh, value over here and then uh, finally you can uh, click on update so to uh, save the values so here uh, is a red exclamation mark so uh, if this is there you need to uh, click on the edit icon and view the value differences uh, and you can just edit and correct the appropriate value once this is done you can uh, push the uh, data to the gst portal so this is how it will be looking and uh, yeah this is what i have directly uh, shown you in our uh, uh, G i mean zoho box directly so so once this is done you can push the data to gst portal in the push to gstn tab you will be able to find the consolidated return with the updated values you have made from zoho box and the gst portal so click on the push to gstin to push your data to gst portal so now uh, the data is into uh, uh, has gone to the gst portal so first we need to file uh, i mean verify and file this return in the gst portal before filing it in zoho box so uh, we need to go to uh, gst portal so the first thing is you need to log into your gst portal go to dashboard and click on the annual returns select the uh, filing period select the gstr9 and prepare online so after verifying the details you can compute the uh, liabilities proceed to file your return then uh, you can create a, a chalan and make the payment if you have any uh, late fee or liability once this is done you can preview uh, uh, draft gstr9 and uh, file your gstr9 form i'll be sharing you the steps on how to do the same in the gst portal first you need to log into the gst portal dashboard and then annual return next you need to uh, click on the uh, annual return and uh, uh, select the financial year and click on search so here you need to click on prepare online uh, in the next page uh, you will be having a question whether you want to file the nil return or not as mentioned previously the nil return has to be filed only if you haven't made any uh, supplies during the relevant financial year if any taxpayer met those requirements then they can click on yes option and proceed else the payer uh, the taxpayer can choose no option and uh, click next now the return you had pushed from zoho box will be made available in your uh, uh, gst portal so once uh, you can click uh, those details will be available right so you can click on the preview draft gstr 9 pdf form to uh, verify the same 
so once done click on the compute liabilities like once you have verified all the details that has been pushed to uh, GST portal from Zoho books we need to compute the liabilities so uh, for that case we need to click on the compute liabilities button then the comp the liability computation will take some time uh, for the GST portal and um, uh, you, you need to check the status uh, later so once the status uh, of the computation is displayed as ready you can see the values populated uh, in the late fee payable and uh, uh, late fee payable section late fee payable and paid section uh, for making this late fee payment and to complete the filing process so the following the following page will display the late fee payable when you click on proceed to file option here you will be having an option called proceed to file when you click on this you will be uh, displayed with the late fee payable and paid values so the available uh, cash balance as on date in the electronic cash ledger will be shown uh, to the taxpayer in the cash ledger balance here you can see if the cash uh, available cash balance in the electronic cash ledger is less than the amount that is required to offset the liabilities then the additional cash required column will get populated so you may create a chalon for additional cash uh, directly by clicking on the create chalon button so the next page you can uh, choose the payment mode and click on the generate chalon then make the payment uh, either through net banking or you can just select it over to, over the counter once the payment is done the values uh, under the additional cash required column will become zero here uh, this value will become zero similarly uh, like uh, sorry vice versa if the available uh, cash balance in the electronic cash ledger is higher than the amount uh, required to offset the liabilities then we can directly proceed with the following preview option uh, this option preview draft gstr 9 and uh, proceed in filing our return so uh, uh, anyhow we have uh, now uh, made the cash required as zero so once uh, this is done once we have made the payment uh, this additional cash required uh, field will become zero and now we can click on the preview draft gstr 9 once this is done you will step into the last step of the file uh, to file this return which is the filing which is the filing uh, page please note that the follow the file uh, button gets enabled only if you have uh, uh, no additional cash is required to pay for late fee and uh, you have clicked on preview draft uh, GSTR 9 PDF button to review all the details enter uh, and uh, clicked on this um, declaration checkbox and have selected the authorized uh, click on this uh, declaration checkbox so here the main thing to uh, is to select the declaration checkbox this is to confirm that you have verified all the details in the entire form uh, because once the form gstr 9 is filed you cannot make any changes so after selecting uh, the checkbox select the authorized signature uh, signature uh, from the drop down so once this is done you can just click on uh, file gstr 9 option so now we are done uh, with filing the GS, uh, I mean, uh, return in the GST portal, we need to update the same in Zoho Books to proceed with the filing further for upcoming financial year. So now let's move on to Zoho Books. Under Zoho Books, as we have uh, mentioned earlier, you just need to uh, go to GST filing tab, annual return, and then click on uh, view return. There, uh, you can just choose the tab called file return. So you can just click on the mark as filed option and then enter the filing date over here and just enable this checkbox that you understand that i cannot undo this action as i would like to mark this return as file just click on mark as file so with this the form gstr 9 filing process gets completed in zoho box so you might wonder like what is the difference in filing this return directly in gst portal and uh, from books if the return is filed in the portal directly you will have to generate the auto calculated summary in the portal and validate the data with your transactions manually that is you have to download the gstr1 gstr3b uh, summary and all and then you need to compare uh, that with the auto calculated summary and enter the value if there is any mismatch in the portal directly uh, by clicking on each and every uh, section 
Instead, if you file it from Zoho Books, the system will do that for you. That is, it will give a detailed comparison of uh, value differences between the auto-calculated summary and the data that you have in your Zoho Books and update the same in the respective table. Also, you can push the data to the GST portal in a single click without any hassle. So once the uh, push is done, you can just have an overview on the push data in the portal and proceed in filing the return, which would be a piece of, a piece of cake and uh, a great time saver. Hence, we suggest you to file this return using Zoho Bucks to compare and reconcile your uh, uh, filing precisely. So let's uh, have a recap of what we have discussed so far. So the first thing is what is GSTR 9 and who are all required to file this GSTR 9 return. And the prerequisites is basically the taxpayer should have an active GSTIN and uh, he is to do so. And then uh, the due date for filing the return and the late fee which would be the 31st of December and the late fee would be 200 rupees per day. And the structure of GSTR 9 which uh, comprises of 6 parts and uh, six, those 6 parts have a different set of tables over there. And the steps to file the GSTR 9 in GST portal as well as in uh, GST books that is you need to generate the return, you need to fetch the auto calculated summary, compare the data with the GST portal and the data in Zoho books and then you need to push the data to the GST portal. Once the data is available in the GST portal, you can just uh, preview it and then if you have any late fee to be paid, you can create a chalan and uh, 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 make the payment. Once the payment is done, you can just directly mark the return as filed in your GST portal and you need to update the same data that the GSTR 9 has been marked as filed in the GST portal in Zoho Books as well. So this is how uh, we would be filing the GSTR 9. So I hope from this webinar you were able to understand how Zoho Books can file the uh, form GSTR 9 return efficiently. So now uh, we can have a, a Q&A session. If you have any queries, uh, please post the same in the questions tab. So uh, here we have a question, uh, credit and debit note clarification. So we presume you are talking about the credit note and debit note and the sales module. In that case, uh, we'd like to inform that the credit note is basically the credits uh, uh, which you would like to create uh, for the end customer and the debit note is what like if you would like to increase the um, sale value then uh, the debit note uh, will be useful in Zoho Books. Uh, yeah, the query is I missed uploading an invoice in the month of October return. So can you tell how to add the missed invoices in the next month filing? So basically uh, adding the invoice in next month filing, uh, like uh, once the next month uh, filing date is open, you can just directly file it in uh, from the GST portal. The question is how do we update in Zoho Books as file after filing GST separately in case we are not filing through GST filing in Zoho Books? So um, whether you're using GST, uh, I mean Zoho Books for GST filing or not, we have an option called Mark as Filed. So as I have said for uh, GSTR 9, once the GST uh, for GSTR 1 and 3B has been filed in portal, you can mark the same as uh, 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 filed in Zoho Books as well. We have this option. So the question is uh, how to amend vendor bills in GSTR 3B. Uh, G GSTR 3B is basically a summary, so uh, it's not possible for us to uh, amend it over there. So we presume that you would like to adjust the ITC. In that case, uh, we have an option called adjust ITC in the GSTR uh, 3B summary. You can just click on uh, the adjust ITC and uh, update it over there. Uh, so the question is, is GSTR 9 to be filed if uh, the turnover is less than 2 crore? So actually the GSTR 9 uh, filing is mandatory for the uh, taxpayers who are having more than 2 crores. However, uh, uh, your business case might be different. So we suggest you to consult with your uh, uh, tax consultant before proceeding with this. So uh, thank you Ilamati for such an insightful session. Uh, I believe this GST webinar series has been useful for you all. So here we covered about the GST uh, returns which are supported in Zoho books like GSTR 1, 3B and 9 and also about the GSTR 2 and 2B reconciliations. So with this we are winding up our GST webinar series for this year. So we were looking forward to reach uh, to uh, connect with you guys in our upcoming webinar series. Please check out the announcements tab in your Zoho books organization. Uh, to know about the various webinar series. 
so we shall be posting details there and also if you have any further clarifications you can always reach out us to support.india at zohobox.com or on our toll free number so we have exclusive uh, toll free in our regional languages as well so if you reach us a support number number one is for zoho books and you can uh, connect to the various languages like english hindi tamil and telugu by clicking on one two three and four respectively thank you so much for supporting us throughout this webinar series and we wish to connect with you in the upcoming series as well so thank you once again